Good morning, everybody. Danny Wanda back from Pecan Grove. Uh, guys, we had some pretty heavy weather come through. Well, well not heavy weather, it's a lot of wind. And uh, I was looking at one of our, in our woods right here and I saw this oak tree top that had broke down right here. You know, this is just the woods. And I don't really pay a lot of attention to it. But as I walked up to this, I was going to try to take the grapple and get a hold to it and pull it down. And when I drove up here, I looked and it had pulled a pecan limb down right here. And guys, this pecan limb is loaded. And I said, if that little pecan limb has that many pecans on it, then there's a pecan tree right here in amongst all these woods up in here. A little one. Yeah, it's not very big. I said, if there's that many on this little limb, what's on the rest of the tree? So I backed up and began to look. And when you get up, the tree's out here, it's leaning out this way. Up in here, I don't know if we can get that where you can. I can see them with my naked eye, but I don't, yeah. Look at, they're in here literally by the hundreds up on this little old bitty tree growing here in the woods. So I was like, okay, and I look and here's another pecan tree right over there in the wood. There's one right out here by the pile that we have here that we just didn't pay any attention because all these china ball trees and oak trees and everything, and when I look up in the top of it, I know you probably can't see it with the camera, there's pecans all up in the top of it. The tree over here that's in the woods here I had, when I pushed around out here, I didn't really think a lot about it. I left some of the oaks because, you know, I was just trying to leave some trees. Well, this is a pecan, and it's leaning out, trying to get out from under all this other stuff. Well, I looked at this bigger pecan behind it, and it is loaded just as heavy as the other tree is. I mean, it is literally got pecans on it everywhere so and we weren't thinking of this as a pecan orchard we just kind of left sporadic yeah, yeah we just looked at trees. It the woods you know but you know me now uh, uh the curse of the south right there oh tongue uh, nuts tongue nuts and look how many they're just you behind you put daylight up in here and when the sunlight hits all the nuts that fell from years ago because i took the trees out they're just coming up. But guys, now I have a new project because I'm looking at the limb span of this tree. It encompasses this tree right here has got to go. What kind is that? That's an oak. It's an oak and this oak. Well, that's this is pecan here. Both of them? These are both pecans. Now, this one will have to be cut for smoking wood to get it off the side of that right there. But this one will probably begin to straighten up a little bit once we get this out of here. This oak right here will have to go. I'll have to dig it up right here and get it out of the way. And I'll probably have to, uh, there's a cherry tree right here. This cherry's gonna have to go. I'm going to have to, uh, this is another pecan right here though. A little one, and I mean, look how little, and it goes right there. Yeah. I don't see any pecans on it, it's too small. It's too small, but now I gotta come right here, and this oak is wrapped and growed into this pecan tree right here so this oak you have to select cut it it's it's grown it, right there too it's wrapped into it and growed into it so i'm going to have to take my chainsaw at the ground and work around with the chainsaw and try to cut it and just let it fall out here in the, in the opening out here so that i can uh cut it up for firewood this year but it, it's got to go and then this one here is on the back side that the top broke out of it's going to have to go. In order to leave the pecans. In order to leave just this one pecan tree here where it will actually produce pecans like it needs to. And then we got, you come in here, there was a big pecan tree right here. Somebody cut it because when I bought the property, this tree had been cut down. Probably somebody didn't know what it was and they just come in here and whacked it off. But now here's another pecan tree growing right here so in order to help these trees to be able to and mature, what is the tree that's leaning 
that's broken leaning and going That's a China, a China ball tree, which so that is one useless for nothing. really needs to go. Uh, another pecan tree right here. And there's a grapevine behind it. And all this has just got to go. It's all junk. All the underbrush has got to go. More pecan tree leaning out right in yonder? Yeah. That's a pecan. Now, let me say this. When I first came over here, the, the elderly gentleman that I talked to about this property asked me could I do a little pushing. This was before we even made a deal or anything. And I told him, I said, sure, if you need me to come over here and do some pushing, I can bring my tractor over. And he said, well, and I'll show you right here. This was two years ago. Uh, yeah, two about years this ago. time of year, two years ago. It was. It was about this time of year, two years ago. Right up here, right, right straight through this area right here, there was a dead log like this big around. And I told him, I said, wow, that was a big tree. He said it was one of the original pecan trees that was on this property. And Katrina blew it down, and he had taken a chainsaw over the years and just cut some limbs off of it and let them fall down, and he would cut them up and try to pile them up. But he couldn't do anything with the big, giant, dead log that was here. So I brought my Kubota over, and that's what you see all this up in here. I broke that tree up into little pieces and shoved it up into a pile back in here. See. You can still see some, some parts of it. Parts. I mean, there's pieces of it you can make out in there that's like this big around. You know, because the uh, it, it has rotted and began to deteriorate. And then over here. And then over here, there was a bunch of cedar. And I didn't know it at the time, but there was cedar that it's had just been laying cut. in there. Can you see the cedar log sticking through there? Yeah. Uh, Barely, but... Barely. I'm going to probably try to take my grapple and see if I can't pull that out because cedar doesn't rot. But now he had tried burning a bunch of it after I had pushed it up. He, he, he set fire to it and he, he tried to burn it, but it just didn't work out. Yeah, and, and plus it was right here in all these woods it could have easily just got away from me, you know. But uh, I told him don't mess with it after I bought it, you know. I said I'm just going to... Leave let it, it rot down, but let it rot down. I'll come here and dig my soil out of it. Look at the tongue, tongue nuts. Yeah, see, that's the thing. Those things, oh, they're just a, they're a curse. If you get them right now, you can pull them up. Yeah. If you wait two months, you can't get them. Yeah, you get closer into the winter, these things will have got such a root system. And these are here are kind of ball trees. I hate them things. Yeah, we don't need those either. Now, let me say this. This right here, the reason this tree is laying on top, this is a sassafras. Mm -hmm. It's just as solid as a dollar. It will not rot. So it needs to come out too. So I will use it for a post somewhere. Uh, I laid it on top whenever I found it uh, on the property here. Um, and look at this collection. Plus this is, beauty berries. Oh, yeah. The, the curse of the south. Another curse the beauty berry. Good Lord, look at that. I know. Man, man, man. Yeah. But. Beauty berries everywhere. And two, and see, here's another tongue nut tree right up in here. I see, I haven't been able to get right back in yeah. here just yet. It's loaded. And it is loaded with tongue nuts, and I got to get in here with a tractor and try to get that pushed up and get it knocked down. If y'all have any oh, uses for that, I'm glad to let you have them. <laughs> It's horrible. Now, we also have another pecan tree I found when I was doing a little pushing right here to get ready to put the hay in here. I left the one right here. That's why we named this place Pecan Grove, because that giant pecan tree that was the old antique pecan that was here on this hillside right here, the gentleman told me shaded this whole area out in here, and Katrina blew it over. But and I was walking the first day. All that was woods. Yes, that was And all it wasn't woods. cleaned up over there on that side. And you can see we've cleaned it. Yeah, we cleaned it. And the there's whole a lot of pines and stuff like that. Over there on that hillside is like three or four pecan trees. Yeah, they sell actually and they're more than that now. And like they're like little, up. like this. And I happened to notice them the day I was walking, and that was all woods. And that's why I called it Pecan Grove. Little did I know those three or four pecan trees were just a semblance of all the pecans that were everywhere. Yes, this place is wrapped up in them. And the thing about it is, is you can't see them because they're in the forest. The squirrels have planted them. And the squirrels eat, who, who are you fighting now? I'm fighting the squirrels now. I have killed 
20, 25? Around 25 in the last week. Uh, eating pecans. Eating my pecans. I mean, I've waited two years for this, and I ain't about to give it up, you know. Uh, I now, keep my do gun any of the these have, these are too small. Uh, this one's probably a little, little small, but you know what? I don't know because I haven't looked. Uh, I don't see any. don't see any on it. Uh, it may be a little too small. But now, that doesn't really mean anything because I can take you around on the property and show you trees that's no bigger than that. It's got pecans all over them. And, and it's maybe because of the age. They, they're small, but the, because they were so they much were, junk. They were in the woods. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was just engulfed by other timber, and I had track hose and dozers coming in, taking all the timber out around them, and now they're just sticking out in the opening. And they did have an, one year to pollinate and to grow and everything. Uh, so, you know, they should begin to you know, make a lot of pecans. But now behind us right here, this is something you don't ever see anymore right here. You see what all this is right here, guys? This is stuff that I have salvaged off of the property. This is lightered posts that mm -hmm. I've taken up from old fences and. And we have um, a bunch of this at, uh, at Deep, Deep South, South that's fixing to come over here. That's, this is a minimal pile compared oh, to Deep is, South. This right here, this is nothing. I mean, if you look at all these old antique posts. I want to use that one. That's going somewhere in my front yard. I don't know where, but that one's going. And there's another one right on top that looks similar. Pretty, pretty similar to it. Because I, mean, yeah. I bring the grapple up here and just pile them up. But you look the at the character in these posts and stuff. I mean, you see how many he's got. And look, there's a little pile of small. Yeah, that, that come out of the ponds when we were uh, building the new pond down here. When we done that, that came from there. That's just small pieces. Yeah. But the character. Some of these have some of the most unusual character. These were limbs on the old pine trees. You know, you see how they And this comes from ancient pines. Yes. And you can see the old posts still have the hinges on a lot of them. Uh, the wire. And, I, and the nails chain. and the Look. chain for the gates and all. We're still on all these old tiny fence posts here. As I find these fences in the woods, you have to wonder what did the owner, you know, what was it like? When, you know, then, what kind of what did it look pastures. like what kind of pastures what kind of how was his system set up you know and totally I bet different than what I had it looks amazing once you if you had ever saw it at that point see there's still metal on this to keep yeah, I remember that, was, that keep, came off of the uh, grapevine, grapevine to keep to keep the rodents from climbing up the post yeah I remember there's a coffee can on top of yep. it original coffee can that was made out of metal yeah the real coffee can not That's plastic not. To see there was a hole in this there's yep. holes look they i mean these are natural those weren't drilled no, no those are natural that's where a limb come out of it yeah the limb was up in that old post and, and this is out. not all of them if you come around here i'll show you something else this is lighter all this is and look how long i mean they yeah. didn't do the dinky little eight, i found nine these foot. off out in the woods now this has wire to it uh so it was a post of some kind, but guys, look, I mean... The length. Look at the length of it. And it has this giant piece of steel <laughs> drove straight in the top of it. I don't know what that was And for. then that one's got the, like, the little... This one those? had an insulator on it. This is a piece of cedar. So you know they had wire running around that. And that well, insulator looks just as good as the day it's put there. The, the gentleman that owned this, I know this for a fact because one day I was sitting in his house with him and I noticed he kept looking out one of his windows into where we have the cornfield at now. This pole was set up out there and I asked him, I said, what do you keep looking out there for? He said, I have a telephone wire ran from the house through the trees all the way out to that field out there and he had a light. The deer were eating up his garden that he had out there. And he said, I sit here in this window on these cold, cold days because he was stoking the fire up. And he said, and I look out that window, and if anything comes in that field out there where my greens and all are, he said, I just open this window and I just shoot from the window. You know? So he was taking deer out <laughs> from the window in the house. I thought that was pretty unique. And the, the, the insulator was there for where he could see at night. Guys, we have a dilemma on the property here. I don't know if you call it the dilemma. We, we don't know what we have. And I won't take it down, 
because I don't know what it is. It's a very unusual it's, tree. It's a highly unusual tree. We've not seen anything like it around here. Loaded with these green berries all over it. Uh, evidently, it's not invasive because it's only one tree. And it's, I cleaned out around it. Well, you, it doesn't look like it now, but I filed all these bricks in here. But uh, two years ago, I pushed around it. And now, it got out of the woods and it has blown up. It was about a third the size. Yeah, it was just a little tree whenever I done it. But it's got these berries all over it. I don't know what it is. If some of y'all happen to know what this is. Now this is the tree. It was leaning really, really bad to get out from under all the underbrush that was in here. And you see the limbs that are coming Look at all up. the water sprouts that has come up on it. Uh, all the way up that, now that I've got it opened up where the sun can get to that side of it. And I have pictures of how bad it's leaning, but if I can back off. You can get like right here, you can really get a good perspective of how bad it's leaning. It's leaning like a 45 degree angle. Uh, some of our older pictures two years ago show this tree, because I think I asked in that what it was. But it didn't have the berries and stuff on it. But right. now, this tree comes out. And it's leaning so far. This was not all out here two no. years ago. It was like up here, up that high. Now that it's gotten heavy, it's actually leaning over more because it's drawing out and the weight is pulling it down. And I don't want to mess with it. I like because I can get up under it in here and, it, and the weeds don't come up. True. You know, but I, now, I like that. let's find. We need to find a limb. With leaves and berries so you can see. The leaves are not variegated. They're not serrated. The vein is in the middle. They're long and elongated. With a, a touch of a point. They have a slight point on them. They're not lobed on the ends. And the berries are in clusters. They're I mean, in clusters. Uh, it, I don't think it matters. Some of them have one, two, three, four, five. I mean, most of them have four or five per cluster. Uh, and they, they they're come almost off. pointed. The berries themselves are almost yeah. pointed on the end. Don't know what they are. Uh, we'd never, like to know. We would like to know. So. And the young leaves, let's get a picture, because sometimes they'll show you the young leaves. This is the new ones that's coming on here, the, the light green ones. They, uh, you flip them upside down, because sometimes a lot of your things won't let you look upside down. You don't have a lot of, uh, veins on the back you just have a main stem yeah up the middle of it so and i don't uh, know we don't we don't have the app that you know we don't, i should have but i don't we don't do all that stuff i mean and if anybody can figure it out we'd like to know I'd because really like to know uh, this is an awesome tree and it's, it's just we will have to trim it up some but we will have to manage nothing so i know what it is yeah we'll have to manage it in a way that benefits the tree and us. Yeah. But it's an awesome shade. It's making, it is really, it is really coming out to make a really big shade. And if you could clear like all the under leaves here, you would have, you could come in and ha have a sitting area here. Yeah. Like our, one of our picnic tables or something. If we ever get all the stuff. <laughs> Tough. The stuff. This stuff you see right here, let me put it this, you see all this right here? This was what was in the barn when we bought it, and I stuck all these bricks on pallets. We have a sink. sink. We're going to be using that in one of the. I'm going to use that somewhere around in the your shop, shop or something. Or that won't be in the shop. It'll be outside. It's yeah. somewhere under one of my lean tos Because this there. is an awesome sink, and there's not much wrong with it. No, there's nothing wrong. With it. Um, we were going to use it in the house, but. But I, I needed two sinks, not one. Yeah. And uh, the way the window fell, this was too high. Yeah. The this back is a, on it. Uh, a left, a left side washboard sink. And I like that because it's the way I wash is putting my stuff to the left. But we're right. going to use it with the cannon or either on the back porch or in I around your it. shop. I put it where we, uh, where I put my things to hang deer and butcher them and everything. Yeah. I may put it there because we, there we can use it for vegetables. And we it, I it mean, for a lot of once we clean it up, it, it's yeah. awesome. And I may refinish it so and that it looks brand new again. Then all the brick, we're not sure yet what we're doing the brick with brick. are the same as what's on the house. Yeah. And we don't want to lose those. Don't want to lose that And pattern. then you've got the old brick. These yes, I was clearing up land. And the guys, these I pushed up out of the soil. 
Well, some of these were around the front porch, too. Yeah, we were doing some clearing, and these are the St. Joe is what's wrote on those bricks. If anybody uh, has any They clue. come out of New Orleans. I know where they come from. The guy yeah. told me that um, they originated from New Orleans. They're, they're St. Joe. They're solid. And then there's some other solid Yeah, brick. there's some other ones. And then, and then there's some over there with little holes in them. Yes. So there's a variety of brick that's getting yeah. overgrown. We're going to have to spray this before we even... Let's shoot some vinegar on top of all this in here and kill it. Before we can even get back to the brick. Yeah. But I, mean, got... I haven't worried about it because I know we can... We got the agricultural vinegar I can put on it. Yeah. So we know there's brick in here. Yeah. And the original brick columns that were on the house. That was on the house. The original columns that was on the there's house. There's two yeah. of those. And, uh, and... There's actually some cemetery... Uh, oh yeah there was there's marble around there marble i found those up around the house and buried in the soil probably was used for a flower bed yeah they something. were used as a flower bed but it is leftover pieces from cemeteries from mar the marble from there there's probably yeah i don't know somebody, six or eight pieces somebody lost a grave marker maybe i don't know but <laughs> it was broken it was and somebody broken. replaced evidently yeah because it was broken in several pieces and yeah. people would have replaced that but this is this is just amazing. Well, we have got to get back busy, guys. Uh -huh. If you know what our tree is. Yeah. And this ain't all, guys. I mean, you know what? Before we end the video, why don't we take a ride? Because there's a place on the property I have not looked at the pecan trees to see if they even have any pecans on them. And it's a place that we cleared out. I haven't been there in, I don't know, maybe three or four months. Well, why don't we make this video number two on the pecan trees? Well, let's do that. Because okay. we, we're going to show them the, the pecan orchard, the big one. Yeah. The one by the shop. Um, there's places you've cleared out that we've not shown which ones have pecans, which ones don't. Yeah. And this one. We'll show them all of them in video number two of number where two. do we have pecans. Right. Thank you, guys from Pecan Grove.